Hello, my name is Chloe, and I'm here today to talk to you about integrated electronic systems and circuitry, which is a really big part of electrical engineering, and it's really important in solid state physics. So, what is an integrated electronic system? Well, it's really a combination of basic electronic devices or circuits that create useful functions. And by combining multiple circuits, you can expand your scope and make a numerous amount of things. So we all use integrated electronic circuits every day, and this may be our mobile phones, our computers, or even our cameras. And what really brings these devices alive are circuits. But circuits are not only used in electronic devices, I mean, they can also solve problems, and we'll see that at the end of the video. Today I'm going to teach you the concept of integrated electronic systems and circuits, and I'll demonstrate how to build a simple circuit then I'll explain how it's part of an integrated electronic system. Later on, I'm also going to show you something I built by integrating multiple circuits that I think is an improvement to electric cars. So let's get down to building our basic circuit. Here I'll show you how to make an LED turn on and off using a switch. I'll use a 9 volt battery to power our circuit, and I'll talk about voltage in a minute, wires that connect our electronic components, a breadboard to build our circuit on, a 200 ohm resistor, a switch, and an LED. Now this circuit we're about to build is just one part of an integrated electronic system. Keep in mind that an integrated electronic system combines many circuits. Now I'm going to draw the circuit diagram, which is like the blueprints for building our circuit. The circuit diagram I'm drawing involves our battery and our three electronic components, the switch, resistor, and LED. And just so you get a more clear understanding, here's all of the electronic components right next to their drawings on our circuit diagram. So the first electronic component we're going to talk about in our diagram is the resistor, which is really denoted by that squiggly line and that blue looking thing. And really what a resistor does is it regulates flow of electric current. Now, current is just the flow of electrons that flows through the circuit. So the reason we'll use a resistor is because the resistor will help us not burn out the LED. And that's because a small change in voltage, which we'll talk about in a second, can produce a huge change in current. And we don't want too much current flowing or voltage through the LED or else the LED is going to burn out because the LED has something called a voltage drop. And if the voltage applied is greater than the voltage drop, then sadly our LED will burn out. An LED is an light emitting diode. And what happens is when you apply enough voltage to the LEDs, the electrons are able to recombine with the electron holes within the device. And so then um, photons are released, thus lighting up your LED. Now let's talk about the switch. Now a switch is just an electronic component that can break an electrical circuit because it'll interrupt the current. Now as I open and close, you'll see on the circuit diagram, basically it's the switch switching on and off or allowing or not allowing electrical current to flow. So now I'm going to just redraw our circuit diagram and then we'll start building our circuit. So just first, a little bit about the battery, which is denoted by those four horizontal lines. So the plus side is where voltage is going to flow through from the battery, and the minus sign is called ground, and uh, ground is the return path, so that's where the voltage is going to return. And voltage is really just a force. So let's get on to actually building our circuit. So following our circuit diagram, I put the red wire, or the plus, or the power, um, and I'm connecting it to the switch right now. And so following the circuit diagram now, we have a resistor coming up. And again, a resistor just regulates the flow of electrical current. So I'm connecting the resistor to the switch. And our last electronic component is going to be our LED. So I'm going to connect our LED to our resistor. And the LED has a long end and a short end, and we're going to make sure that we put the long end connected to the resistor and the short end connected to the ground or the minus. Now let's connect the ground to the corresponding blue strip on our breadboard.
So now we're going to connect the battery to our circuit so we actually get power. So the red is like the plus sign and the black is like the minus sign. So we have a power side and a ground side. We're just going to connect that right into where we connected our red and our black wires. And as you can see, right when we turn the switch on and off, the LED will turn on and off correspondingly. So we have successfully built a very mini circuit. So now just remember that this one circuit is just one part of an integrated electronic system. It's not a full electronic system, but it's just one part. So now I want to introduce something a little bit more interesting and something you can add on to the circuit, and that would be a microprocessor. And a microprocessor is an integrated electrical circuit that can carry out instructions from computer software applications or programs. With just a few tweaks and adding on a couple more things, we can make this circuit completely different. So now when we switch the LED on and off, we can make it say blink. And that's what I programmed this microprocessor to do. Microprocessors are a core part of electrical engineering. So let's revisit the circuit without the microprocessor attached. This is really just one part of integrated electronic systems, and a multitude of these circuits, or circuits like these, can contribute to a huge circuit, and something of importance. Here's one circuit I built that's part of a whole electronic system of this electric car shown. One application for integrated electronic circuits is this electric car that's autonomous and can detect battery fires in electric cars. It uses many individual circuits, as you can see, and combines them into one integrated system to perform specific actions. With that, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I hope you've become a little bit more interested in electronics, which is a core part of solid-state physics.